Alright guys, hello. Been a little while since I've uh, recorded a video, but uh, today I just want to go through some of the updates within TutorBox uh, version 1.6.1. That is the latest version as of December 2019, and uh, it's. Uh, I've been playing with this new version for a couple of days now and I found that um, they've done a really good job in um, improving a lot of uh, quality of life uh, requests that uh, users have uh, given them. So without further ado, uh, let's have a quick look at some of the updates. I'm not going to be covering uh, all of them because I think there are quite a few updates. but. Um, the main one, well, a couple of the main ones. The first one is that uh, to add a new printer, there are now a lot more different LCD and resin printers supported. So chances are that you're going to find your printer in here. If not, just create a default one. Uh, if you're new to TutorBox and you're not sure how to use it, um, just have a look through it my video playlist for the TutorBox Quick Start Guide. I did a pretty comprehensive video on using TutorBox uh, a while ago. And the main interface is pretty much exactly the same. So uh, yeah, if you watch that video, you should be able to navigate and do the basic stuff. But today we are gonna be covering uh, just the updates and some of the stuff that I find useful. So along with uh, new printer profiles, uh, the um, settings interface also now supports the creation of custom resin profiles and it also lets you export out these resin profiles to share with uh, other users. So that's, that's really good as well. So say you've got the same printer but uh, you have different resins which need different exposure times um, then uh, you'll need to, before you need to create different, uh, a list of different printers, but now using the same printer profile, uh, you can have multiple resin settings, so that's really good. Um, and the other big thing, of course, is the uh, support update um, in TutorBox 1.6.1 has been, uh, been really good. The auto support, feature works really well now. Um, they fixed some issues with uh, missing supports on islands. So from my testing, uh, it's been pretty good in picking up islands in the auto supports. So the interface is still the same, but uh, let's just hit the auto supports and we'll see what comes out on this test model. So we'll give it a little while. So one of the things I read was that it has smarter uh, branching and uh, separation of uh, supports from one solid structure. So now that it uses less resin uh, and has less of a floor contact, uh, but you can have more supports branching out from one single one. So that's really useful. Um, so you can see it. I've been using the old version of Box for ages now, 1.4, I think. Um, so to me, some of this uh, support um, tree, tree and uh, structure, like interconnected supports, uh, look a little bit different. It just feels a little bit more efficient as well. So yeah, it, it's, uh, it's a nice update for sure in terms of uh, auto supports as well. Um, now the other main thing within the supports uh, tab is we now have the ability to import and export auto support settings as well as your main support settings. So this is really nice. Um, so to export out the configuration, so it basically it takes all your settings in here and it just saves it out as a CFG file, so which means you can actually uh, you know, post this online and share with, uh, with your friends. Um, because different types of resin and different types of printers uh, require different um, support settings. 
So having the ability to share that without just you know reading out each of these numbers is uh, is really nice. Uh, and of course, you can import them as well using that CFG file. That's all really good. The other main thing is that the light, medium, and heavy supports now all save your settings. So which means if you've set settings for the light support and changed the default, uh, previously before, if you clicked onto another, um, say, medium, and then click back to light, it would actually lose those settings. So, so these were always set to a particular set amount, uh, set values. Uh, you, you, you weren't able to change these, but now you can. So you can actually toggle between light, medium, and support, and have your own custom uh, value support settings for each of these presets. So essentially, it's three quick uh, support presets that you have access to. Uh, and the great thing about this is that you can mix and match uh, your manual support settings um, really quickly now. Uh, be previously, before, you've had, you would have had to go in here and adjust each of those values to change your support type. Um, but now, these presets make it really easy. So. I'm going to just go in and uh, have a quick look at what I mean. And then now also, if you delete, click on the Remove All button, it actually prompts you instead of just deleting everything. Okay, so my general workflow is I'll start with heavy supports on the bottom base supports. All right, just going to do some test ones. And then now I'll switch to medium. All right, so you can see how quickly it is now to switch between the different support types. So good. So having a mix and match of different uh, you know, light supports and heavy supports and medium supports is really good. And you can see it's smart enough to actually uh, do branching uh, between the different supports as well, which is pretty awesome in my opinion. I mean, that's pretty pretty damn good. So I'm mixing, you know, I'm adding in a heavy support as the main branch, and then adding in light supports as the, uh, the tips. Yeah. So, yeah. Welcome feature. Um, what else? So besides from that, uh, the presets and also the import and export of your con support config. Um, the other big thing, I believe, is this small pillar shape in the support settings. So this uh, gives you really fine support from um, for the supports that don't touch the build plate. Um, Probably don't have an example to show you here because since this is a pretty big piece, yeah, there you go. So previously, before it would have um, just tried to set a really big thick support for this fine fine area, but in reality, you really just need a tiny little uh, little amount of support for this. So I've actually tested this on a small uh, head sculpt, and uh, you know, generally um, the years uh, are always a pain to support, and uh, they generally, you know, the, the bottom of the year generally has like a uh, has an eyelid. But uh, now instead of you know putting a big massive support and then causing a big dent, um, you can now use these really fine supports and uh, it doesn't leave a crazy mark. So uh, here we go. I'm just going to import in a model I made earlier. So this is using the medium support setting and I added in a bunch of um, manual ones as well. Now you can see that, uh, see these little doodads here? 
So previously, before you weren't able to do this. Um, and these, you know, this model is really small. Um, and then these, yeah, are even thinner. I think uh, you can set the, yeah, so you can set the diameter, uh, set the values here. So these are 0.5 millimeters uh, thick. Um, and uh, they're super easy to remove. They don't leave any marks. They're super tiny, but uh, they actually do work. Um, so I printed it out, and uh, yeah, these came out fine. So quite useful on really small models. Um, let's just, maybe I can show you here. No, no let me do it. Um, what else, what else? Okay, let's, uh, let me import the, just the normal unsupported one. Um, okay, so, um, so these, all the other values are pretty much the same as before. And again, they have tweaked the auto support and the branching algorithm to, to make it even more efficient and better, which uh, I definitely appreciate. Um, the other thing, so the interface has a little bit of an update. Um, the little gizmo, rotation gizmo, now looks different. Um, what else? Yeah, I think I think that's the main thing for me uh, because I use the pure poly more. I don't actually um, slice within Shooterbox. I just make the supports and then export them out. So the support making stuff is definitely one of the big things uh, that I use all the time. And uh, yeah, I've, I've found that uh, this new version works really well. It's pretty much the same as before, but better. Uh, so if you're used to using Shooterbox. I 100% you recommend uh, downloading the latest version and it's a free update so go grab it and have a play around with it and uh, let me know what you think um, but yeah I think I think you will like the new uh, support making algorithms um, and that's about it for today let me just quickly have a look through to see anything I've missed. Um, so the slicer, slicer view has always been there. So that again, that's useful for um, checking for islands. And also now I believe, yes, so this is new. So the green indicator means that the supports are touching the bottom uh, of, of the floor. So sometimes you might get some floaty bits uh, but yeah, this just simply tells you that yes, these are touching the floor and uh, you shouldn't have any issues with that. So that's all, that's a welcome thing as well. Um, so a quick rundown, the addition of new printers in the settings and the addition of uh, custom, multiple custom resin profiles for each printer. Um, the update of um, auto support algorithms and also the ability to import and export support settings and the other big thing is now toggling between the light, medium and heavy support. It actually saves the preset of whatever value you changed. So this lets you mix and match um, between the three different supports when you're making manual support. Okay, so that's about it. Um, thanks for watching. And uh, if you have any questions about Cheaterbox, uh, feel free to post a comment uh, and uh, see if I can answer them. Um, otherwise, yeah, happy printing, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. See you later.